Hey everyone, today we're going to work on IXL assignment TFK, graph solutions to one step inequalities. So when we are graphing inequalities on a number line, we have a couple different things that are important to look at. If we look at the left here in blue, whenever we have an inequality that is either greater than or less than, we graph that using an open circle because that open circle tells us that that value isn't really included in the possible set of values. So for example, if we look here at x is greater than two, that means any number larger than two would work. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is why it's represented with a line then going towards those numbers. So it's telling us that it's anything greater than two, but because it's open, two is not a possible answer. And then same would be true for X is less than five. That means any number less than five would work. So our arrow is going to go over to the left towards all the numbers that are less than, that are smaller than five. But once again, it's an open circle because the number five isn't included. It has to be less than that number. Then on the right here in purple is how we graph um, inequalities that are greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. When we look at our symbol, that's what the little line underneath means, is it means that X could be greater than three or it could be equal to three. Because of that, we use a closed circle because that closed circle there tells us that that number is included because it could be equal to three or any number that's greater. So our arrow then shows all the numbers that are greater. Same would be true in the bottom example here. X is less than or equal to six. So X is any number or could be any number less than six but it could be six itself. It could be equal to that. So we represent that with a closed or a filled in circle. All right, let's now head on over to IXL so we can practice that. And I think one of the big things about this assignment is making sure you guys understand how to actually graph it on the line and work that portion of the assignment. All right, here we are on IXL, assignment TFK graph solutions to one-step inequalities. And remember that IXL has an awesome video as well that you can watch. Always good to see more examples and hear things from a different perspective. Sometimes that will help things click. So our directions here tell us to solve the inequality and graph the solution. So the first thing we need to do is solve it. I'm gonna rewrite that down below. So we have plenty of room, H minus one, is greater than six. Remember that when we're solving inequalities, and this is also true for equations, our goal, our purpose, is to find out what our variable equals. So in this case, we wanna find the value of h. So in order to do that, we need h all by itself. It needs to be the only thing. So it can be, as an answer, h is equal to a number, or in this case, h is greater than a number. So this minus one here is in the way of our h being by itself. The way that we can get rid of that is by doing the inverse, by doing the opposite. So the opposite of subtracting one is adding one. We're going to add one. And now we have to do this to both sides of our inequality because we need to keep it balanced. We're not creating a brand new problem. We're just moving things around so we can get that H by itself and discover what value it represents, what number H is equal to, or in this case, greater than. So that's why we have to do it to both sides. The reason that we do the inverse, that we always do the opposite, is because it cancels it out. It moves it over. Minus one plus one, so one minus one is zero. That cancels out, that goes away, and we're just left with h is greater than six plus one is seven. So our solution is x is greater than seven. The first thing that we need to decide is whether our circle is going to be open or closed. In this case, it's going to be an open circle 
because H is just greater than seven. That means H can be any number greater than seven, but it doesn't equal seven. It doesn't include that. It's just greater than seven. So when you go over to IXL, you can put your point on seven and it will automatically come up as a closed circle. So you will need to click it a second time and then notice that it's now open. And then if X is all of the numbers greater than seven, well, that would be like eight, nine, and 10. So we would then click on the arrow here to show that it continues past that number line and it's all of the numbers greater than seven. And then when we hit submit, it'll be counted as correct. All right, let's try another one here. First up, we need to solve it. We have y divided by two is greater than or equal to three. So remember when we're dealing with our equations or our inequalities, we solve them by doing inverse operations. So currently we have y is being divided by two. The inverse, the opposite of division is multiplication. So we can multiply both sides by two. When we do that here, if we look at it this way, that would be two over one times y over two. Well, two times y is two y. One times two is two. And two divided by two is one. So that's how it cancels out here. When you guys do your work, you wouldn't have to do all of those steps, but that's the rationale as to why we do the inverse. That's the rationale as to why the twos will cancel out to equal just one single y, okay? So we'd have y is greater than or equal to three times two, which is six. But we need to graph our solution. First step is to decide whether you'll have an open or a closed circle. Because this one is y is greater than or equal to six, it's going to be a closed or a filled in circle because this time six could be a possible answer. It could be equal to that. So you'll come on over to your IXL screen, press six, and it automatically is closed, which is what we want. And now Y is all of the values greater than that. So seven, eight, nine, 10 are all greater. Press on the arrow, showing that it goes all the way to the right. All of these numbers that are greater than or equal to six could be possible values for y. All right, next up we have 4a is less than eight. Remember that one of the ways we can show multiplication is by having a number and a variable side by side. So this is telling us four is being multiplied by a. So in order to get A by itself, we do that inverse. The opposite of multiplication is division. We're gonna divide both sides by four. Four divided by four is one. So we're left with one single A. Bring down your sign. That is less than eight divided by four, which would be two. So we've solved our inequality. We have our answer. Now let's graph it. What's our sign, or sorry, what's our circle going to be, open or closed? Hopefully you said open because it's just less than, less than and greater than, open circle. If it's the or equal to ones, closed. So we're going to come over to two on our graph. First time we press it, it's closed. Click it again. It now becomes an open circle. And A is all of the values less than two. So that means this time we're gonna be going to the left because those are all the numbers that are less than, that are smaller than two. So move your cursor all the way, click on the arrow, showing that it's gonna continue. Those are all the numbers less than two. All right, let's do just a couple more problems together here. Now we have N minus four is less than or equal to four. We want to solve and get n by itself. We need to get rid of this minus four. The inverse of subtraction is addition. So we'll add four to both sides. 
minus four plus four is zero, leaving us with n is less than or equal to eight. What kind of circle would we have, open or closed? It would be closed because it's an or equal to inequality. It could include the number eight. So click on the number eight once, nice closed circle. Okay. N is all of the values less than eight. So it's gonna go to the left because these are all the numbers less than eight. Click on that little arrow. Oh, yep, we want it to be solid. And now we can hit some more. All right, this is a really good one for us to look at because um, not only are the numbers larger, it's also written a little differently. And you will get some of these kind of questions once you get into the higher SMART scores and start to get a little bit closer to that challenge zone. We have 68 is greater than or equal to 34u. All right, even though my variable's on the other side, I can still solve. We had problems like that in class before. We have 34 times u. The inverse of multiplication would be division. So 68 divided by 34 gives us 2 is greater than or equal to u. Now, we technically can leave our inequality like this when we go to graph it. But for me, it makes it a little bit harder for me to know which direction my um, arrow is going to go. It's just, for some reason, just having it backwards like that just makes me second guess myself. So whenever you get a problem like this, if, you know, you're the same as me, you can rewrite it. We can flip it around. You just have to be careful that we flip everything so it still is the same inequality. So we're going to flip and put the u on the other side. Then that means we'd also flip our inequality. And we'd flip and put the 2 on this side. So we just flip everything. And a good way for you to make sure that you, you know, have the proper inequality symbol is in both problems here, if we kind of think back to when you first learned about inequalities, your teacher maybe you know, talked about an alligator or Pac-Man and how they're always eating the larger value. In this first one here, it is opening towards the two, it's eating the two. And then in our second one here, it still is that same direction. It's still opening towards your two, it's still eating the two. So that kind of helps confirm that you flipped everything properly, you're good to go. Now we can easily graph that. It would be a closed circle because it's less than or equal to. And because it's less than or equal to, it's all of the numbers less than two, bringing us here to the right, I mean, sorry, to the left. And if you didn't flip it, you know, if we kind of come back to two is greater than or equal to you, it's the same thing. Two is the greatest value. So that does reinforce that we need that u is all of the numbers smaller than that because two is the greater of the sides. So if you didn't want to flip it, that's kind of how you can think about it to solve this. All right. Well, it is now your guys' turn to hop on IXL and practice this. If you have any questions, make sure to check out IXL's video, and then you can always email me or come to a help session. Bye.